Good evening, brother. Good, good evening. This is George Ray, and I'm uh, presenting today on government contracts on behalf of the Small Business Development Center at FIU, along with uh, the City of Miami Gardens in conjunction with our sponsor, Wells Fargo. Thanks so much for attending the presentation. We'll go ahead and start um, momentarily. So um, today's um, presentation is about government contracts. I have a very dynamic presentation for you. This is a general presentation. So um, if you need more detailed information, please don't hesitate to register with SBDC, the Small Business Development Center. We offer free or no cost um, legal, um, not legal, but uh, business assistance. We don't offer legal assistance, by the way. Um, please take a moment and fill out the, um, the survey information that was provided to you at the beginning of the session. And I'll go ahead and start now. So our organization, the Small Business Development Center, is uh, funded largely in part by the Small Business Administration, which is a federal agency within the United States government. Um, the SBA is also charged with issuing small business loans to um, entrepreneurs, and they have programs that are designed to help um, boost minority um, and also uh, Hispanic and African-American um, ownership and business. So there's uh, different programs available as well. We have different resource partnerships that we work with. We don't offer loans ourselves, but we do help you package your information for loans, uh, et cetera. We also help with business plans, marketing, and also uh, government contracts. We have a PTAC office, and that's called the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And that office, uh, the primary function of the office is designed to assist you with government contracts. So um, the PTAC office is um, funded by the Defense Logistics Agency. So um, we're going to go ahead and try to move the toolbar here. Just a little bit. Let's see if we can... All right. So um, today's training is designed to help you learn more about government contracts and expand your knowledge. And um, if you need technical assistance, we'll be happy to assist you at no cost. You'd have to just register with our center. So I'll go ahead and uh, move into our next slide. So as I said previously, we, we offer no cost one-on-one -on -one individual consulting. Um, we don't do the work for you, but we tell you the work you need done and we try to encourage you to get it done. We'll actually walk the, um, the whole way along with you along that path. We have um, different uh, consultants who specialize in various disciplines of expertise. Um, it runs the gamut with full service um, organization access to capital is our, is our most popular service. We do government contracts, marketing, franchising, uh, international trade, et cetera. So let's go to our next slide. So these are just some stats in terms of the productivity uh, at FIU we've been able to contribute to our community. Um, we've generated over $1.3 billion in sales. We've um, assisted uh, over 3,500 business owners uh, at no cost, one-on-one -on -one individual consulting. Um, we've retained over uh, 9,000 jobs, close to 10,000 jobs. We've launched over 193 businesses successfully. So we've done a lot of work within the community. And um, our reach spans from Dade County, County Line Road, all the way down to Monroe County, which is in Key West. And uh, this is uh, the um, list of our consultants. If you see the uh, chocolate handsome fella at the bottom, that would be me. So we'll go ahead and continue our presentation. This is our team here. And everybody pretty much loves their job and their experienced executives or people who um, are very passionate about what they do. So this is our team down in the Keys. And again, um, that's me. So we'll, we'll um, hop right into our presentation now. We're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of why you're here today. So work smarter and not harder. The first thing I wanna to say to you today is you've taken a very important step towards your success with your small business or which the concept you have in your head that you would like to jumpstart by being um, affiliated with our presentation today. So sorry that we're not able to make it today in person, 
However, there is a um, tropical storm um, that is out there brewing. And um, for our safety, uh, it was probably best that we did this online. So everyone will be safe. So um, work smarter and not harder. And really what that means is just have everything in order before you um, get ready to go where you're going, all right? So in government contracts, if you want a, a government contract, it's not um, a fly-by-night kind of thing, all right? It may take you a while. It could take you six months. It could take you two or three years before you get your first contract. But once you get a contract, um, unless you mess up, you're probably going to get more, all right? And they're going to be even bigger than the first one. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a very competitive, very, very competitive um, industry. However, you can do it. All right, and I'm here to teach you how. Um, so the six steps, uh, the six step getaway, evaluate, plan, register, prepare, and pursue and achieve. So uh, this is all pertaining to government contracts. So um, is the government contract the right path for you? It's not the right path for everybody, okay? If your business doesn't have credit, liquidity, if you can't raise capital, then it's probably not the right um, not the right opportunity for you. Now you can, even if all those things are bad, you can turn those things around. I've had clients who've done that, but that's an anomaly. You know, it doesn't necessarily happen all the time. So you got to have a plan because if you don't have a plan, then it's almost like you plan to fail. So develop your plan from entering into the government marketplace. So um, I'll talk to you about targeting contracts later on in my presentation, but you don't want to be all over the place. That's why you got to develop a plan. All right. Uh, if you to select too many industry codes, if your um, capability statement is not um, like narrowly focused, um, these are like red flags to um, contracting officers. And they're probably going to pick somebody else who's specializing in that particular contract. So you want to tailor your, um, you know, the RFPs, request for proposals, or the contracts you submit uh, specifically towards that particular grant, you know, the scope of services and everything. Um, register, complete the um, required business registration in SAMS. So um, make sure you get your SAMS um, registered. If you don't know how to, or you need assistance, we can assist you with that. But um, you wanna go to SAMS.gov in order to register there. That's the official federal procurement uh, registration site. Um, develop marketing tools and secure uh, certifications like hub zones. Um, you have 8A, there's different um, certifications you can receive. Some of these certifications, if you receive them, it guarantees you business. For instance, like the 8A. Uh, I haven't met anybody who received the 8A designation and was work, has worked with the government successfully and who's not a millionaire, all right? Chances are you probably will be. It's not difficult to accomplish getting the certifications. Neither is it for the hub zone, but you gotta be ready for those opportunities because once they come around, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. If you sign up and uh, they call your name and you're not ready, it's not going to look good for you, all right? Because um, it's hard to get in there. And once you get in there, you got to be ready. So use this time to prepare yourself and get ready. Um, so pursue. Find, select, and pursue government opportunities. Um, don't bite off more than you can chew. Find something that would be suitable for you. I say get your feet wet first before you hop into the water. All right, uh, it's very important. Um, you want to make sure you work out all your system gaps, any kinks, hire and fire whoever you need to prior to you um, trying to get a large contract. So achieve, win, support, operate uh, contract, and win more business. So once you get in, um, it's all but certain that you'll be successful unless you mess up. All right, and the most important thing for you at that point is really to have the right people hired and make sure they get their jobs done. Uh, to fill the obligations of those contracts. So money, all right, let's examine the money. The money is very important, but it's not everything, but it certainly is a lot, let me tell you. Um, you wanna make money off of government contracts. And sometimes you need to have money to get into government contracts, all right? Uh, you may need to have increased bonding capacity, increased insurance. You may um, have increase in, in your staff. 
um, just increasing in overall expenses. So you, you have to be properly capitalized no matter what business you're in. You want to make sure you have enough money to do what you got to do. Most businesses fail due to undercapitalization in the startup phase. So if you're a startup, um, please remember that. So uh, first you need to ask yourself, is government contracting the right path for me? It's not the right path for everybody, right? Um, if you underbid a contract and you're awarded that contract, you're still going to be expected to perform. So it could put you out of business. So you got to make sure you're good at cost estimating. That's not necessarily in my presentation, but it's just some, something I want to tell you from experience um, that I think is critically important. Some people are so eager to get into a new opportunity, they'll almost do it for free. They'll do it at a reduced cost. They'll even lose money to do it. It makes no sense to me. Um, you, you're in business to make money. So try to be competitive with your rates and make sure that you are able to turn a profit. So the reason is because uh, business to government can be expensive and there is a uh, strong competition depending on your product or service. It's very uh, stiff competition. However, you can get in there and be successful. Before we can get started, let's cover some key questions you need to ask yourself before uh, diving into government contracts. So some of the key questions you, you want to ask yourself would be uh, what size contract can you handle? Don't bite off more than you can chew. Okay. Remember, you can go to a new line and get a new job if you get fired, but you can't go to a new line and get a new reputation when you're on a business and it hasn't performed well under a government contract. Okay. So it's very important to understand how that works. I'll give you an example. Uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what's the first thing you think of um, when I mention his name, but you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is your reputation can precede you. And um, so it's very important, you know, to understand you can go get a new name, I mean, a new job, but not a new name. All right. Your reputation is important. So if you're going to be tarnished, pretty much you're, you're done with government contracts. So it's very important to not bite off more than you can chew and fulfill um, the contractual obligations that you have. Uh, in a professional way. So how many proposals can you really handle, all right? So you don't have to create your own proposals. You can go and look at proposal templates. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel with government contracts. Just be creative. And I'm gonna give you some, um, you know, some secret sauce on how to be successful. I have um, been successfully awarded um, government contracts, uh, local and also federally. So I have some experience practically on government contracts. I'm not the subject matter expert, but we do have our PTAC um, contracting officers who are um, at our center and they are at your ready to assist you. Uh, how much growth are you willing to go through and can handle? So growth is a necessary process and growth is not always, you know, it doesn't always feel good. It's not always comfortable, right? Growing pain. It's almost like that toothache you have when you were teething as a baby. Teeth are growing, you're going through some pain. So, um, and it can, it can appear to be that way also in business. Uh, so how many more employees can you add? So if you take on a government contract and let's say you have only five employees today, but now you're gonna have to hire like 30, all right, that's a large amount of people to hire. Yeah, I'm excited for you, you got the contract, but can you manage that amount of people? Can you manage the payroll? Can you handle the scope of services with such a large staff? These are all the things that will, um, you know, be concerning to you or should be concerning to you if you're awarded a successful contract. So you don't want to grow too fast. You may want to start off as a sub before you become a prime contractor, work your way into what you're doing, all right? Um, because your reputation will precede you. And if you have a reputation of getting things done, then of course, and well, of course, people will be calling you. They'll be calling on you to um, <clears throat> make more requests, uh, service requests, product requests from you. So um, many, how many uh, more product services can you can you create or deliver? So that all depends on the amount um, of demand for the product or service, and also um, the capacity of your operation size. So, and that is dictated by your budget typically. So it's very important to make sure you're properly capitalized when you're trying to take advantage of a government contract. Make sure you got your money together. So what if you win the contract? Congratulations. Um, you know, pop the champagne. However, um, next it's going to be time to roll up your sleeves and um, really get to work. So like I said, you want to make sure that you already have your core team uh, so you can work out your uh, kinks 
any system gaps you have in operations uh, with your team, anybody you need to hire or fire, you want to kind of get all that stuff out of the way once you're awarded this contract uh, because it's going to be go time. And if you want to be successful and get more contracts, then you want to do a great job so you have a great reputation. Uh, a lot of different uh, screening review committees, they look at what's called past performance. They look at what kind of contracts have you had in the past previously? Have you been successful in um, you know, completing the scope of services in those contracts? And um, so they, they'll ask around um, and, and they'll, they'll look at your track record. Who wants to do business with somebody who's never done business before? The risk exposure is a lot higher. So uh, of course, that is uh, something they consider. Sometimes there may be people who come in under bid, okay? And for most people, they think that bidding the lowest makes you the most competitive in the contract, uh, in the government contracting scenario where the screening review committee is reviewing your information. Well, uh, it does in some cases. However, if you don't have the um, past performance that kind of like shows that you're capable of getting this done, then they probably won't go with you. I've seen that happen several times. So that's not necessarily the rule of thumb. That you, if you bid the low, lowest, you're gonna get the contract. Far from the truth. So um, in the contract officer, they may look at the contract and say, this is so low, this person can't get all this done for that price. They're gonna be losing money or something's not gonna be right about our contract. So um, and the scope of services won't be fulfilled. So what is the right opportunity which you can afford to win or lose without derailing your company, you have to find that sweet spot and um, and go after it, okay? Can you uh, walk away even up to the proposal due date? You need to find this information out. Uh, every contract, every um, municipal government has their own, their own um, process, their own contract process. So understanding that information is critically important. Um, what does winning this contract build towards for your business? So, you know, it certainly um, builds past performance. It may help you build a greater financial relationship with your lending institutions, having a letter of commitment from a governmental agency saying that you're being funded. I had a client before, and uh, I won't say who the client is, but the client's now a multimillionaire. And he wasn't a millionaire when I met him, but uh, he didn't have the best credit. And um, they gave him a hard time about getting uh, a loan. However, he secured a government contract, and because he had a letter of commitment, the contract award letter, the bank, they looked at him differently. Like one day he was a cat, and the next day he looked like a peacock to the bank. I mean, you know, those letters of commitments, once you're awarded a contract, certainly does go a long way with financial institutions uh, when it comes to lending. And so does relationships as well. Having lending relationships with financial institutions is very important. Go to your community bank, go to your credit union. Go to your bank and listen, don't let any banks disrespect you either, okay? If they won't give you a loan, take your deposit somewhere else, all right? Um, make sure you have a relationship with them though. It's easy to get a loan from a bank you have a relationship with. During the pandemic, a lot of African-Americans were not able to um, get the loans that they deserve for their business because they didn't have their business on the books or they didn't have relationships with lending institutions. So let's break the cycle of that and make sure we have everything we need when we um, are awarded these contracts, all right? Nobody's better than you. Nobody deserves it more than you do. It's a game, learn how to play it and you'll be successful, all right? So make sure your personal credit um, is good and make sure you build business credit as well. All these things are critically important. It's not necessarily in my presentation today, but it's something that I think is important for me to talk to you about. So um, what is your niche target market? past performance, past experience, um, you know, geographical uh, focus area, social economic status, small business uh, standard. Um, who do you know? These are all very important when you're evaluating opportunities, okay? Bottom line, don't think about government contracts as what they will get you. Think about what they will cost you because they can cost you a lot uh, in money and time and in business as well. Um, I can tell you about my personal experiences. Like for instance, uh, at one point in one of my businesses, the portfolio of my business was about 60% government contracts and 40% private business. Well, um, I was doing a lot of government contracting work, and um, but 
they had a problem paying me on time. 90 days, 120 days, somebody went on vacation from the finance department, somebody else went on vacation from a different department, you had to go through several layers of approval. So when you're dealing with government entity, when you're dealing with governmental entities, there is bureaucracy associated. And unfortunately, you still got to meet payroll because people will not work for you unless you pay them. So you have to be properly capitalized. So there was times initially in the startup phase where I had to dip into my own personal savings and even use some of my bill money to meet payroll because I didn't get paid on time. So these are things I did not necessarily know when I first got into government contracts, but um, I found out through experience. So um, making sure that you are uh, properly capitalized is, is very, very important. And uh, it can be very costly, it can be very stressful. But once you get the, the hang of it, the gist of things, it can be very rewarding as well. Particularly if you do a great job and the people who you're servicing, they like you and you like them, things are gonna work out for you, all right? So just be upbeat. And um, we'll move on to our next slide now. So you gotta have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail, all right? Um, Uh oh, I don't. My screen went out. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, George. Okay, perfect. I was concerned because uh, my video. I'll just cut my video off since it went out, but it won't even let me do that. My I would try um, closing out the program and just reopening it. Maybe stop the screen share for a second. Okay, it won't even allow me to do that. You see it's like cycling. Let me see something here. I'm afraid if I hit the wrong button, it may cut me off. Let's try to stop share. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Did you stop sharing, George? So I apologize, everyone. It looks like George is having just a little bit of technical difficulties. So he's going to try to sign back in. Um, but I did want to touch on just um, a question that somebody had earlier. So um, all participants will get a copy of the slides. Um, usually the day after the event, we will send out a thank you email. So it'll be attached. Um, and oh, looks like George is back. Um, George, can you try pulling up your presentation again? It might've just been like the connection. I would also just try to like close any programs that you're not using. Um, I'll, try, I'll try all of the above. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. Perfect, okay, we're gonna go right back to where we were. My apologies for the technical, um, Difficulties. Uh, I'm on the beach and, you know, storm. Let's see. So uh, the reality is the most successful firms and government contracts do not get NASA contracts. Um, they follow um, the tried and true path to small, uh, start local, and they go from there. And I recommend you start local as well. It's almost like practice. So every, there's 27 uh, city municipal governments in Miami-Dade County, and there's also some in Broward as well. So start there, start off with some small 
city municipal governments and work your way to the larger municipal governments. And then from there, you can migrate over to maybe counties and then um, you can go to states and then the federal government themselves, all right? But you wanna practice a little bit. The reason why you wanna practice is because you wanna be perfect uh, at what you do. When you get to a larger contract, you wanna bite off more than you can chew. You wanna understand how things go, payment cycles, relationships. All these things are critically important. And most importantly, you wanna build what's called past performance. So your resume of success, um, that right there almost ensures that you'll be successful in the future. If I'm on, on the screening and review committee, and I see two contracts and one shows past performance of five or 10 years worth of experience. And you can tell they're capable and competent of, to get things done. And let's say they bid five or 10% more than the other contract. I'm probably gonna pick them because I know it's almost like for sure money, it's a for sure bet. So um, understanding how that works is criti critically important. Also, um, take advantage of teaming and subcontracting. You can learn a lot from um, the primes that you can um, you know, use later on when you become a prime contractor and um, grow their capacity. So make sure that um, you know, the more sophisticated you get in your business operations, the more you scale, the more you'll have the need for um, you know, CPAs, accountants, um, various types of insurance, um, payroll taxes will get more complicated. The more organized you are, the more efficiently your business will run. And these things, are things you need to have in order because we need a loan from the bank because of a natural disaster or catastrophe or uh, whether you need a loan from the bank because you're getting ready to get a bigger government contract. You gotta have your house in order, have your books in order. Uh, it's a big part of that. Um, work their uh, way up to larger contracts. So work your way up, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, actually, when you're working your way up, it gives you confidence because, hey, I, I did this little small thing, now I'm doing something bigger. Now I can really do something bigger than that because I've done all those other things in the past. So I think it gives you um, a level of confidence on a parallel to your competition when you do have um, you know, a, a history and a track record of success. So past performance, I think it, it matters. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, Past performance is information regarding your contractor's action on the previous contracts and, and orders and is used as an indicator of uh, you know, future performance. So it's really a no-brainer for governmental contractors and uh, screening review committees to award contracts to people who have been successful at um, completing those contracts in the past. So teaming, um, team, you know, if you break it down as an acronym together, everybody achieves more. So teaming is um, where a, a group of small businesses work together on a project. They may not all have the same capacity, the same skill and expertise, and they may not have the financing to do the entire job, but you bring them all together and they can get it all done. So um, those are some benefits in teaming. And, you know, it's not all about who, what you know, but also who you know goes a long way, all right? Your network determines your net worth. Who you know can determine how long and how fast your money grows. So it's important to understand who your competition is. Instead of them being competition, you guys could be in a collaboration, all right? So it depends on what type of relationships you, you uh, maintain and establish with other uh, people in your industry. So, um, you know, it's all about perspective. You know, the glass could be half empty or half full. But uh, I think that, you know, one of the unique skills of any great entrepreneur is you can't just have sight. You can't just see what's in front of you. You got to have a vision. So, hey, maybe I'm not getting this contract today, but I'm going to be nice to my competition because maybe tomorrow we can be partners on the deal. Or he may even call me up and tell me, hey, you want to go in on going with me on this deal? I met you at the last meeting. You was a nice guy, even though you didn't win and I did. I thought about you. Those things, they happen sometimes. So it allows you to uh, pool resources, management abilities, technical knowledge and skills, um, and really just makes you a lot stronger and powerful. So pooling resources, um, experience, and ability helps make uh, this group of small businesses more competitive in the bidding process. And, you know, like I said, establishing those relationships, it's nothing like having great relationships in business. Um, so by meeting other people in your industry, you may be able to learn things that you don't know, like best practices, you know, um, you know ways to make more money, increase your margins, various things of that nature. So although joint venture agreements are often spoken of in the same breath as primary 
as prime and subcontract and teaming agreements, um, the two are very different, all right? You may not share costs and expenses, all right? You may just share uh, the contract. Your scope of services and your function on the contract may be a little different. So it's not a one size fit all approach. Uh, every contract is unique. And so is the relationships between the prime and the sub. Um, there, I mean, there are typically some commonalities, but um, the other thing is, is, you know, if you're a government contractor, let's say you're a sub, you may not get paid. And it may not be because the government didn't pay you. It may be because the government paid your prime contractor and your prime contractor has not paid you. So these kind of issues arise as well. Well, guess what? You still are obligated to pay your employees if you are part of that contractual arrangement. So um, the government or that entity will still be anticipating that you'll perform on the contract because it's a part of your reputation and also the money you've been awarded or will be awarded. So our local government contracts, now that we've covered some of the common terms, let's get into the search for uh, opportunities and how to use targeting to narrow down your search. So um, as I previously stated, um, there's endless contracting opportunities in the state of Florida, right? Uh, these are some city municipal governments. These are some population breakdowns and this is the entire geographical area of Florida. So uh, out of all these different counties and cities, you should be able to find one contract doing something. So, uh, and if you don't, refine your skills, refine your approach to how you are doing business. So um, how do you um, uh, use targeting to identify your opportunities? So uh, first start your search by reviewing opportunities by your industry, all right? So they have industry codes. When you register with SAMS, you get a NICS code. And your NICS codes are the codes, uh, and your CAGE codes are designed to, uh, to basically uh, identify your industry. And there's other procurement sites um, that are there. BidSync is another procurement site, and it deals with local government bids. So you can peruse uh, different contracting sites and look at the opportunities that are available. So then starting refining the search by your unique advantage of niche, small business set-asides. They have um, different set-asides for socially economically disadvantaged businesses. So you need to get the certifications for that. You have to self-certify in most cases, or they may certify you depending on the uh, entity. Every governmental municipal, go every um, municipal government has their own procurement process, all right? Some of them will accept certifications from other organizations. Um, an example would be Miami-Dade County Public Schools. If you register as a vendor with them and you have minority certifications, veteran certifications, small disabled business certifications, those certifications are still transferable and applicable at Miami-Dade County um, government. And you can probably go to Broward and do the same thing. But you can't go to other city municipal governments with those certifications. They, they don't transfer over. They have their own process. So you may have to self-certify, go through their process, in order to get that preferential points. So typically in contracting opportunities, the contract is scored, okay? They have different sections, like maybe 10 different sections and they score each section. And whoever gets the highest score uh, on their submittal is the one who is awarded the contract typically, right? And in some cases, you know, uh, things happen. So the next look uh, forward, forecasts are back. Um, pass uh, award to get smart on uh, what agencies have spent on uh, what. And so listen, you want to know what's coming down the pipeline. So it's very important to be, um, be in tune with current events, knowing what's going on. And you can also look at past contracts. Like if you see somebody who has a contract that you like, you can request under the Freedom of Information to look at the contract, see what the scope of services were, the style of their proposal, um, how they want it, how much was it. All this information will be contained inside. You can use that information and study it and develop your own contracts and matrix. And let's say the contract is up for bid in three more years. Well, you have three years to meet all the contracting officers in that department, brief, you know, um, befriend them, show up to the uh, pre-bid meetings, ask all questions that you have regarding the contract prior to going out for bid. So it gives you an opportunity to not just be a number is competitive, but instead of being number 57, I'm going to be George, the charismatic guy who asks a lot of intelligent questions. So uh, that certainly goes a long way 
um, when you are um, bidding, I think, personally. So we'll continue um, moving along. So targeting. Uh, look for key agencies, procurement contracts, upcoming RFPs. The RFPs are requests for proposal. Okay, it's the same thing as a contract. Um, so you look at those workshops and vendor outreach events. You can learn more about what the government will be looking for, what type of contracts will become available. So you can prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for, um, to get your credit right, get your business um, credit right, your personal credit right, save your money up, um, hire the people you need to hire, all these things um, prior to uh, you know the contract being solicited. So opportunities. So BidSync is an electronic um, bidding um, site. And I recommend you go there. You can find all type of contracting opportunities there. I won't click on the link, um, but it's pretty easy to navigate. And it's something that um, you should find very easy to use uh, if you're interested. We'll move on to our next slide. So there's also Miami-Dade uh, certifications. Um, Miami-Dade County Small Business Enterprise Certification Program is created for uh, any business entity providing construction, architecture, engineering, goods, and services. And they must have an uh, actual place of business in Miami-Dade County. And uh, three years average gross tax receipts must not exceed the monetary threshold for the program. So it's very important. So also, you know, some contracting opportunities require you to be in business for two, three years. So if you haven't incorporated your business, we offer free incorporation. You have to pay the fee to the state, but we'll do the actual work of incorporating you um, on your behalf. It'd be my pleasure to do that for you personally, actually. So um, if you have that need, let us know and I'll uh, personally contact you at some point and we can arrange a meeting for me to incorporate your business. So, um, Miami-Dade County certifications, think about it. If you, Even if you're not transacting business right away, right now, think about it. If there's a two or three year criteria for you to be in business, you gotta be in business. So it doesn't mean you're, you're profitable, but you're, at least you're in business. So you'll meet the criteria. Um, you know, I got a lot of phone calls during Corona. There was a lot of people who had these ideas they wanted to incorporate, they never did. And they didn't qualify for funding because um, you had to be in business for a year or two in order to get Corona funding. So it's very important. If you haven't um, incorporated your business to uh, consider that, uh, I'd love to assist you with that process. So um, small business, uh, certified small business enterprise, SBE, very attractive certification for the county and also the school board and other in, um, municipal entities. So remember I told you earlier that they score your contract and whoever has the highest score typically wins. So if you are a veteran, if you're a uh, women minority owned business, if you're a small business enterprise, this gives you more preferential treatment in terms of your scoring and points that you'll receive towards the bidding award contract. So uh, it's very imperative that you register and get these certifications if you wanna be competitive because uh, government contracting is extremely competitive. So, and if you're a DBE, a disadvantaged um, business enterprise, same thing is applicable to you. If you're a veteran, same thing is applicable. These certifications really, really go a long way. So I won't read all that, but you can get um, everything. Okay, so local um, development business, LDB is a gender-based neutral program for small businesses that have non-exclusive permits to provide general aeronautical services to commercial airports and um, aircraft operate, operate at MIA. So let's look at um, business development. It's very, very important. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. So um, outreach is important, business development, making connections with the right people. Um, in this city, Miami, it's a big city, it's a big city, um, but it's a small town, okay? So um, knowing people, I think it really does help. So make sure you promote yourself, make sure you hustle, uh, whatever your term is. Get out there, shake the bushes, make sure people know who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. Now this can all be accomplished by a elevator pitch, all right? 30 second elevator pitch, it doesn't need to sound rehearsed. 
but you can tell people who you are, what you do, and um, how they can assist you within 30 seconds. Um, you don't want to talk people to death when you are meeting people at these networking events. What you want to do is be impactful. So you don't have to have a lot to say, but what you say needs to um, say a lot about you. So, and remember, you don't want to spend all your time talking to one person, even if like, you, you know, you're locked in with that person. It's a networking event. There's other people you need to meet and network with. So don't let one person suck up all your time. So um, ask for previous award contracts. It's one of the best things you can do. Study the game, know who won, how do they win? It's gonna uh, pretty much give you a roadmap on how you can win, all right? Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, pull it all together and bam, you have magic. So take proposals and cost uh, estimating classes. I can't stress enough, if you underbid on a contract, how it will put you out of business faster than lightning, okay? It will strike you. Um, so make sure that um, you are not overly eager to get involved with government contracts and you underbid, all right? It can be extremely def uh, detrimental. So develop contracts, RFP uh, matrix to uh, track and forecast contracts similar in scope to what you would like to, uh, to bid on, all right? So understand um, request for proposal scoring committee criteria. You need to know. Sometimes it's very simple. Um, once they, because the process is so competitive, once they get down to like the bottom of the barrel, well, I shouldn't say bottom of the barrel, but what I should say is once they get down to the uh, contracts that look like they're attractive to the screening review committee and could actually be awarded a contract, then they go through this process where they weed out people for just weird stuff. I mean, don't put a, a dot on your eye. Don't cross your T, you're out. You didn't put the date, you're out. You didn't sign the contract, you're out. Um, you didn't put your address down, your telephone number, you're out. Um, just little small technical errors that people make. So um, make sure you pay attention to detail and you're very thorough in what you do. That's why I suggest and recommend, shh, big secret, but request for previous awards. See what the other people did so you'll know what you need to do to be successful. Um, there are three things you should have already um, for when you attend vendor outreach events, all right? And one of those things is your capability statement, all right? If you don't have one, um, get one, write one. Pay somebody to write one for you if you don't know what you're doing, all right? Don't be afraid to pay for things in your business that you need, all right? When it's something you don't like to do, don't know to do, and you can afford it, pay for it to happen for you. It'll always be worth it. Your capability statement is gonna stick out. It's gonna say who you are. Also your elevator pitch, all right? What you say has a lot to say about who you are and goes a long way with people remembering who you are and giving you unique opportunities. So I can give you one scenario where I did an elevator pitch to this one attorney. And I, just, I told him he had a nice tie. I talked to him for literally 30 seconds in the elevator. It was, we were in the elevator. I gave him my car before the elevator door opened. He told me he'll call me up. I thought to myself, He's never gonna call me up. Well, long and behold, six months later, the guy calls me up. He didn't call me, he had his assistant call me. I go to the office, very posh office, overlooking downtown. And um, to make a long story short, I think I'm probably maybe $60,000 my first year off, off of that one client. And he referred me to other people. So I ended up probably making about $100,000 off this one client. Now, you know, rewind, I was in the elevator giving an elevator pitch that entire day. I had people telling me no, no, and almost oh no. Uh, however, I wasn't discouraged. Uh, I met people, I engaged with them. I conducted my business development um, efforts. And six months later, it paid off to the tune of over $100,000. Uh, you know, if you had to encapsulate how much money I made within that year off of him and other referrals. So you never know who you're gonna meet and how influential and impactful they can be in your business. They gave me a lot of hope, gave me a lot of promise, and it really gave me legs to get government contracts because it, it made me realize, hey, I can really make money in this industry. So um, you're gonna face challenges, but being prepared really uh, helps you navigate some of the treacherous um, challenges you'll encounter during the natural business cycle, particularly in government contracts. So I can't stress being prepared. So elevator pitch, hi, my name is George. I own this kind of company. This is what we do. 
I love to have you as a client. Here's my car. Call me if you need me. Can I get your car? Should I follow up with you in two weeks or a week or so just to give you some more informative information about my business? Sure, here you go. I take the car, I follow up, and bam, magic. So business cards are really important. You don't want business cards with Gmails, all right? Um, you want a card that looks professional. It represents who you are, okay? So um, just think to yourself, what you tell these people, your appearance and the cards you hand them and your capability statement really is a reflection of your, how successful your business is and it's gonna be. So it's very important to um, make sure you pay attention to, to detail on these things because these things really matter. This is like going on a date, okay, with a government contractor. They're trying to find out who you are, okay? What are you about? Got a nice capability statement? All right, you know, you're, you're talking nice, elevator pitch, all right? Got some nice cards, okay? These things are critically important. Um, so I'll go to our next slide. So um, the capability statement is basically the resume for your business, all right? Um, I would say less is more. Okay, so clear and concise. Look, contracting officers, they got a lot of stuff to read. The last thing they want to do is read, you know, 10 million pages. Make sure that um, you're clear and concise and straight to the point where you do it in a, in, in a very um, elegant way that is not too long. Okay, um, less is more when it comes to this type of stuff. So the purpose of a capability statement is to provide specific information that will convince potential consumers, uh, customers to uh, do business with you, right? I mean, it's that simple, uh, it's a capability statement. So take your time with that. Make sure every word means something. Um, written well, when written well, it will uh, differentiate your business from the competition. And that's what it's designed to do really. We'll move on to our next slide. And uh, we are uh, pretty much wrapping up in shortly this presentation. So um, your capability statement, I cannot stress the importance of it, but the core competencies need to be listed. Uh, facilities, equipment that you may have, certifications, past performance. Um, these things are really, really important. It's your chief marketing tool to uh, government contractors, uh, contracting officers. So you wanna make sure that it's simple, but it's powerful, okay? Be strategic about what you do. So uh, these are some links uh, to capability statements. I won't really focus on that as much. Your elevator pitch, um, less is more. Don't talk a person's ear off, okay? I'll give you an example. Hi, my name is George. I'm a business consultant with SPDC, a certified business analyst. I'm also a business professor. I help people start their business. I focus on early growth um, companies. I help them combat. Uh, develop competitive strategies, and I love to assist you with your business. We offer one-on-one, -on -one, at no cost, individual consulting. Here's my card. It's less than thirty seconds. All right, that's the kind of breakdown you want to give people. All right, because they may not have a lot of time. But you also remember that people they like compliments and they like to talk about different things. So um, try to avoid politics or sports teams because. Um, you know, sometimes trash talking happens when you talk about those kind of things. So um, keep it surface level and be professional about what you do. So your elevator pitch, um, 30 seconds at the most, all right? I think you can get everything accomplished in those 30 seconds. People like when you're packaged that way. And they have, and you may intrigue them because you told them all this information about you in such a short amount of time. They may say, this person is really efficient. Ah, I have more questions for you. And, you know, just be present to answer. So who are you? What do you do? And um, what do you need them to do? You know, or you can follow this right here. It, it kind of like breaks it down in more detail. So um, you don't want it to sound rehearsed. You want it to be, you know, something that's casual. Um, you don't want to sound like you're trying to pressure someone or you're trying to sell them something, all right? You want to sound natural, like it's just you. You're just having a conversation. So that's really, really important because people, they can detect like fakeness or nervousness and things like that. You got to have an air of confidence about yourself in order to really, really um, be impactful at this, okay? In my opinion, a good elevator pitch is delivered with confidence, okay? 
Now, sometimes it's healthy to have fear and nervousness and use that fear and nervousness um, and convert it into confidence uh, while you're doing your pitch. And you can do that by practicing. So it's very important to understand how that works. You are the chief marketing officer for your business. So you have to be present and ready to speak with people. Some people, they're nervous, they're shy, they're timid. Look, if you want to be in government contracts, that contract's not coming to you. You're going to have to go get it. And um, that means you're going to have to go out there and network and talk to people. So uh, exercise. Who can give me an elevator pitch on uh, their company? So we won't do that today. Uh, the essence of time. But going to trade shows certainly helps as well. Um, learning as much as you can. I won't go over all this information here. Uh, in the essence of time. But I will talk to you all about something that's critically important as well, um, the cone of silence. So once a contract's been issued, an RFP request for proposal, the contracting officer cannot talk to you about the contract and the scope of services or anything like that, because they may be giving you an unfair advantage uh, over other people who want to know the same information. So all the information you want to know about this contract has to be asked to them prior to the solicitation being released. And typically what happens is those contracting officers will have what's called a pre-bid meeting before the RFP is released to the public and the cone of silence is in effect. So the cone of silence, uh, it may um, be inappropriate to initiate um, contact with a contracting officer after the uh, commitment period on, on the solicitation has closed or when bid proposals are under evaluation because they may be telling you something to give you, you know, an edge up against other people. So to avoid any kind of appearance of impropriety, they have this thing called the cone of silence, which means they're forbidding to uh, discuss uh, this information with you. So make sure you get all the information you can prior to the uh, solicitation being advertised at the pre-bid meeting. And before the pre-bid meeting, you should be requesting previous contract awards for that particular contract, figure out, well, how much money did they bid? How many people did they have in the scope of services? Uh, what was their budget? These different things, they, they really matter. So you add in some inflation and maybe your numbers look similar to theirs. And if you've been networking with people for the last year or two, it may be your chance to get the contract. Maybe they're moving on up. So, um, you know, there's different opportunities. So bonus meetings, follow-ups, very, very important. Uh, make sure you pay attention to detail, typos, not really good, okay? Having a Gmail account, not really good. There's different things you can do to really stand out and really look professional. So do you, don't do yourself a disservice. Make sure that you pay attention to detail, you cross all your, um, your, um, your T's and dot all your I's. So um, we're rounding completion on the um, presentation. These are some helpful uh, links. You'll have a copy of the presentation at the conclusion of the presentation. Um, this presentation is brought to you by FIU, the Small Business Development Center, in conjunction with um, Wells Fargo Bank and uh, the city of Miami Gardens, Mayor Rodney Harris, and the entire city council of Miami Gardens um, was very instrumental in making sure this happens. I wanna thank you all for um, being present today in the uh, seminar. And hopefully you learn something that you can take with you that will assist you in um, being successful in small business. Don't forget to fill out the surveys um, that will be um, posted. Um, if you have any questions at this particular time, I will take them. Um, so yes, I just opened up the feedback poll so if everyone could just take a moment to answer it. Um, it's just a couple of questions on today's presentation. Um, and then George, um, you do have a couple of questions in the Q&A box. Um, okay, I'll stop my share. Well, actually, I'll leave, I'll leave that up. But okay, um, let's see what's in the Q&A box here. Let's see, it says here, just, no, that's not it. I don't see anything here. I'll go to the top, start from there.
Yeah, I don't see any any questions pertaining to uh, the presentation from what I could see. Or maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, I am. See, I'm glad I checked this. All right. So um, can we also start? All right. Can we also start getting the certifications prior to the three year requirement? Yes. If you like, for instance, if you're a woman uh, owned business or you're a um, disabled veteran or a small uh, SM, SME, small business enterprise, you would technically still qualify. You don't have to wait for two or three years. Every certification has its own requirements and every city municipal government has their own requirements for those certifications. So some may have, you must be in business for two year requirements. Others, they don't have those requirements. So it's very important to investigate uh, everything um, and that, uh, that's for Terrell Long. Um, and I see Jerome Bird, Mr. Bird. All right, Mr. Ray, how can I get info on um, agricultural and engineering? Mr. Bird, register with SBDC and get a free consultation uh, in government contracts. We'll be happy to assist you and provide you technical assistance in that area. Otherwise, I would encourage you to go to sams.gov or to BidSync and review government contracts um, there to look at the uh, different um, information and opportunities, Mr. James Bird. Antonio uh, Rosado, uh, where do requests, where do I request the federal and state previous awards? Local would be nice to know as well, but I understand that is dependent upon the region. Okay, to answer your question, you would get that information from the contracting officer for that particular department. So I'll give you an example. Let's say Miami Gardens Police Department is hiring. Um, they're issuing a contract out for someone to purchase police cars, all right? And you just so happen to be the person who, who um, is doing all that stuff right there. Um, you would basically see, you, you would go to that department and see who's in charge of procurement and ask them who's the previous person who serviced your contract and can I review the award? Under the Freedom of Information, uh, contracting officers, they're required to provide you with that information, okay? So hopefully I answered your question. And can I help you with a capability statement? Um, not me personally, but we have people at our center who can assist you. I don't really um, have the time to, to assist you with that, and it's not really my expertise. Uh, I would say, um, but we do have um, two, PTAC consultants, and that's uh, Procurement Technical uh, Assistance Center consultants. That's their primary routine function. So they probably be better suited to assist you with that than I would. Um, and I think that was the last question that I saw. So Sylvester Anderson, can I please be added to the email list? Yes, you can if you register for this event. Our program manager, Brianna Williams, probably has already added you. If she hasn't, Mrs. Sylvester Anderson, Mrs. Uh, Sylvester Anderson, she will add you to that list. So um, I don't see any more questions. Hearing none, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and um, log off momentarily. I'm gonna make sure it says show all. Am I missing one? Let's see. And I just wanna remind everyone, we will be sending a copy of the presentation tomorrow. It will be included in our um, thank you email that goes out. Also, what will be in that email is just a link if you'd like to request for request for consulting with our center. Um, but please just keep in mind, we only work with Miami-Dade and Monroe County-based businesses. Um, there are other SBDC centers that are available to you that um, sort of encompass different areas throughout the state of Florida um, if you are not located in those areas. Yeah, I'll yeah, say I'm sorry, Brianna. Go ahead. Now, I just wanted to uh, say one more thing to all the participants. Uh, I think it's very important for you all to pay attention to detail, get a good business plan, don't buy off more than you can chew, network, meet people, business development efforts are critically important, work on your capability statement, make sure your business card and your website looks professional, and try, try, try. You're going to face um, some, some obstacles, all right? It's not going to be easy, but it can be done. Um, it took me like two years to get my first government contract. But since then, I've never had to look back. I've never had to worry about money. So uh, once you're in, you're in, uh, if you do a great job. So um, I just want to say 
best of luck to you all in your future endeavors. However, I can assist you personally. Um, please let me know uh, via SPDC. Our number is um, is, is listed um, below here. Well, let me just minimize this for a second. You can see our number there. And uh, I'll help you incorporate your business or uh, follow up uh, consultations with you individually. Thanks so much again, shoot me an email. But the best way to get a hold of me is to register with our center and to set an appointment. So um, that's pretty much it. One last thing, life is not about what you get. It's about what you negotiate. So make sure you go get what you want, all right? Uh, it's out there. You have to negotiate um, how to get it, but it's out there for you and you deserve it. So uh, thanks so much again. And that's it for me today. All righty. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys.